Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson we're going to see how we can measure the rate or speed of a reaction. So over here we've got a reaction that is taking place and we need to know how fast that reaction is taking place. Now one of the things to realize is that this reaction is producing a gas and so what they do in industry is they use an apparatus like the following and what this apparatus does is as the reaction is taking place some gas is being given off over here. Now that gas goes through the pipe. Now you can imagine that in the beginning of the reaction that syringe was at the beginning like this and as that gas goes into this chamber it would push the syringe backwards and we could measure the volume that is collected and that would be the volume of CO2 because that's the only gas that's being produced. And so we could stand with a stopwatch and maybe every 30 seconds we could measure how much volume we have and so we could make a table like this and then we could use this table to plot a graph and then we could use the values in the table and plot our graph. And so then what we can see is that at the end of the reaction the line becomes flat. Now what that symbolizes is a reaction that is now complete. Another thing to realize is that the gradient of the slope is a lot steeper in the beginning and then it becomes more gradual as the reaction proceeds. And so there I've gone and drawn two tangents and we can clearly see that the gradient at the beginning is a lot steeper than at the end. The reason for this is the following. Remember that for a reaction to occur we have to obey the collision theory. And so we need for a collision to take place effectively the, the particles have to collide with the correct orientation and they must have enough energy. Now as the reaction is proceeding your amount of reactants is getting less. They are being used up. And so because there are less of them there are less collisions taking place and so the speed or the rate of your reaction starts to slow down. Now another way that we can measure the rate of a reaction is by using the following apparatus. We can use a laboratory scale. Because we, because we have a gas that is being released, it means that the mass of your flask that has your reaction is going to decrease. And so we can set it up like this, where we've got our reaction taking place, and then you put that on top of a scale, and you can record the value that you see on the scale every 30 seconds, for example. And so you can construct a table like this. And something I just want to mention, many students say that the mass gets less because your reactants are becoming products. That is not true at all. Think about this. Everything is balanced. So if we have two hydrogens on the left, well, you also have two hydrogens on the right. If you have one calcium there, you have one calcium there. If you have two chlorines, then you have two chlorines. So in fact, the mass should stay constant. The reason it's not staying constant is only because we have a gas that is being released. If there was a lid, then the mass would stay constant. And so now we can take these values in our table and construct a graph like this. And then once again we can use the values from the table and construct a graph. And so this graph goes downwards whereas the volume graph went upwards. This makes sense because the mass of the flask is going to decrease whereas the volume of gas that you're going to produce that would increase. Another thing we can see is that at the end the graph becomes flat and that is because the reaction is finished. That is because one of your reactants, either the HCO or this calcium carbonate, is complete. Remember we have a limiting reactant. And then we can also see that the gradient is steepest at the beginning and then becomes more gradual as the reaction proceeds. And that is an indication of the rate of the reaction. So the rate of the reaction is fastest in the beginning and that's due to the collision theory which says that we need collisions to take place. And those collisions take place a lot more frequently in the beginning because we have more particles in the container. As the reaction progresses you have less particles in the container and so less frequent collisions take place and so the rate slows down. And so that's the end of this lesson. We looked in this in this lesson we looked at how to measure the rate of a reaction by either measuring the volume of the gas that is collected or we can measure the mass of the flask which will decrease due to the gas which is being released. Thank you very much for watching.